What makes Koh Yao different from any other island in Thailand? Is Koh Yao right for you? In this video, we'll talk about what you should know about Koh Yao so that you can make a decision on whether or not you'd like to go. The best way for me to do that is for me to show you what I did there. So I made a series of five videos showing five different locations in Koh Yao. In this video, we're gonna check out the Anantara Resort in Koh Yao Yai. And at the end, I'll give you a final summary of whether or not Koh Yao might be right for you. Oh yeah, here's some pics to whet your appetite. This is one of the best hotel entrances ever. And it happens to be at the Anantara Resort in Koh Yao Yai. Koh Yao is actually a set of two islands located in southern Thailand, in between the more famous places of Phuket and Krabi. It lies in the Andaman Sea and is technically part of the province of Panga. The two island names are very similar. There's Koh Yao Yai and Koh Yao Noi. Yai means big, it's the bigger island, and Noi means small, it's the smaller of the two. So be careful when you make reservations online so that you're booking the hotel to the island you actually want to go. The Anantara is on the bigger of the two islands, known as Koh Yao Yai. To get to Koh Yao, either of the two islands, you need to take a boat transfer. The most common piers and ports to get the boat are from Phuket and Krabi. There's three main kinds of boat transfer that are available for tourists. One, you can take the public ferry. Two, you can take a semi-private speedboat. Or three, you can take a private speedboat. The public ferry is the cheapest, but it takes the longest time. There's regularly scheduled ferries that come and go from the main ports and piers of Phuket and Krabi. The semi-private speedboats, they also launch from the same ports and piers, but they're faster, more expensive, but less crowded. On the private speedboats, which are either owned by the hotels, or you can charter a private yacht. These are more expensive than the other two, but as the name suggests, you get more privacy. I like to take the speedboat owned by the hotel. It's not completely private because there can be other hotel guests that ride together. But everything is taken care of by the hotel staff, and that's why I love it. There's typically a private lounge before you board, and they load and unload your luggage all the way to your room. So you can just enjoy and relax the beautiful boat journey to the island of your dreams. The time it takes to go from pier to island is about 30 minutes on speedboat. The public ferry, depending on where it comes from and where it stops along the way, can take maybe 45 minutes or up to two hours. So those are your boat transfer options. Are you ready to go yet? Now that we covered how to get to Koh Yao, you last saw me on the hotel's private boat transfer. And here we are, arriving at the Anantara's private pier. By the way, to catch the hotel's private boat, I highly recommend staying overnight at the NH Lagoon Hotel in 
Phuket because it's owned by the Anantara company. So in the morning, you just walk down to the lobby and they shuttle you directly to the boat. So here we are at the pier. It's a beautiful view. How do you like Koyao so far? Do you think it's for you? Well, there's still more pros and cons to go over, but the most important takeaway so far is there's a bit of travel involved in getting to and from the island. So, depending on how long your vacation is and where you're coming from and how much time you have, getting to and from the island is something you need to think about. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. After arriving on the pier, a private buggy takes us to the hotel property. Now, buggies are a common way of getting around at five-star hotels. They're convenient and fun, but take note, it may mean that going in and out to public spaces outside the hotel is not an easy walking distance. Also, at this hotel, private cars aren't even allowed to enter where the rooms, restaurants, and beach are located. It's really a property unto itself. You'll even need a buggy ride to your motorbike if you rent one. For me, I love it. You know what I also love? These landscape waterfalls when you arrive at the hotel entrance. Well, here we are. We finally arrived. Let's go check in and then see what the room looks like. But first, let's take another look at this epic hotel entrance. Check-in was easy and smooth. The Anantara brand is a very well-respected brand. I stayed at their hotels before, so when I saw there was an Anantara in Koyao, it was good to know that great hotels invest on this island. I want to compliment the high professionalism of the staff here. Typically, front office staff have four-year degrees majoring in tourism at the university. They're typically bilingual, but sometimes speak up to three to four languages. Here, I was happy to get a rundown of my welcome drink made with a local flower to give it a purple look and a sweet taste. The Anantara has both rooms, which they call suites, and also private villas. My room was a deluxe sea view suite. It was 90 square meters and had a private balcony facing the ocean. I paid $335 a night. My room location was easy to get to. It was on the third floor, elevators worked fine, and it was an easy walk to the beach, pool, and hotel restaurant. They're all within a few minutes. In other words, you don't need to take a buggy to get to the beach. The size of the room for a suite wasn't huge, but it felt spacious because of the high ceilings and the layout. And due to the large bay window, it kept the room bright, which I like. The view from the balcony was very nice. I mean, it wasn't right on the ocean, but it was a refreshing view, unobstructed, and you can gaze into the distance. There was a nice day bed that I slept on half the night. I didn't hear any noise from my neighbors like loud music or talking, so that was great. The decor and ambiance is what I really like and appreciate about Anantara hotels. It's very tasteful, it has an uplifting feel, there's lots of details like wood paneling gives it a natural vibe. The room is also very clean and kept up well. The bathroom was very nice. There's great amenities, the layout is good, 
there's a separate bathtub and shower. The rain shower is, has great water pressure. And there's a separate toilet area, which I really like because if you want, you can do your business in privacy with the door closed while someone else uses the other parts of the bathroom. The beverage amenities are standard and very nice. The Wi-Fi was fast and easy to log on to. I had no problems both on my phone and computer. It's really a nice room overall. I'd say this is a 10 out of 10 room. After we checked in, we decided to get some local eats. We rented a motorbike directly through the hotel and it's very easy. I love when the hotels offer that service. And when you ride around, this is pretty much what it's like. It's an island, it's small, it's kicked back, it's just joy. <laughs> and this is what the street's like, that's what the traffic's like. Thai Muslims make up the majority of the population in Koh Yao. I love to eat the local food because you get a taste of the history and culture of the region. Now that brings me to the point, you won't find pork being eaten or sold in Koh Yao. A few doors down from the restaurant is an awesome massage place, Leela Massage. Shout out to them. The lady, we went back twice, and the lady I had just did a great job. They have, uh, I did the aroma oil massages. Those are some of my favorites. We ate at another local restaurant, and the people there are so nice. And if you look in the back there, there's a 7-Eleven. It's the only one on the island. I googled a place to take photos and it was recommended to try out this sandbank that a lot of people like to take selfies at. The ride there is pretty cool on the motorbike. When you walk out there, it's super hot and there's no shade on the sandbank. So for me, to tell you the truth, I didn't really enjoy it. Um, but there were these cool crabs that were all over the place. At least that was a little exciting. Now that you've seen a taste of the local food and culture, this brings me to the biggest point, which might make it or break it for you to decide whether or not you want to come to Koh Yao. And that is, there's no nightlife, there's no shopping malls, there's no big temples, there's no ordering food late at night, and there's no bars. Now you might be thinking, that might not be a reason not to come, that might be your reason to come. Because that's Koh Yao, an island culture that is chill without crowds. Now if you like Koh Yao, you can use it as a jumping point to do all sorts of activities like kayaking, snorkeling, scuba diving, and you can use it as a jumping point to go to the Pee Pee Islands or Krabi and Riley Beach. The Anantara itself offers these tours straight from their resort. As we near the end of this video and get to the final summary, I would be amiss not to show you the sunrises and sunsets of the private beach of the Anantara Resort. Koh Yao Yai is 25 kilometers from end to end. Ko means island and Yao means long. The indigenous peoples were called sea gypsies, having inhabited the Malay Peninsula. 
prehistoric cave paintings have been found in the Panga region where Koyao is located and date back to 3,000 years. The Southern Thai dialect spoken today is also called Pak Thai or Dambro, slightly different from the official dialect of Central Thai. Southern Thailand is truly a region where Buddhism meets Islam. The Portuguese explorers were the first Europeans to see this place, hence the Sino-Portuguese influence since the 1500s. Around 30 million tourists visit Thailand every year, and Southern Thailand is the number one beach destination. From around the world, people come together here, and it's no wonder because of the beauty and magic it sustains. I hope you're enjoying this video as we come up to the final summary on whether or not Ko Yao is right for you. But first, let's take a final look at the Anantara property. The Anantara is a beautiful resort to just kick back and relax. It's got an awesome infinity pool. You can sign up for spa and wellness treatments. As I mentioned, you can walk right down to the beach from your room and the pool area. There's different kind of spots to chill at for the whole family. There's four restaurants at the resort, including a beautiful poolside bar. And there's other private options with a view. I really had a great time staying at the Anantara. It's one of the best luxury hotels you can find on the Koyao Islands at a reasonable price. I highly recommend the Anantara if you're going to Koyao. Well, now that we've talked about how to get to Koyao, what arrival and check-in are like, we've seen a room tour and ate some of the food at the local restaurants, got a massage, did some sightseeing, enjoyed the sunrise and sunsets. It's time to sum it all up. The first pro is that there are many transportation options for traveling to the island. However, the cons are you have to pay more for speed, comfort, and privacy, and the more time you spend waiting for boat transfers is the less time you have to do the activities you love. The second pro is that there are nearby restaurants, massage, and sightseeing right outside the hotel. However, the con is that they're not walking distance and you have to pay to rent a motorbike or taxi each and every time you want to go to these places. But it's pretty easy to rent these things. The third pro is that Koh Yao is a chill and relaxing island with no crowds. However, the con is that there's no nightlife, no bars, no malls, and no big temples to visit. Also of note is that alcohol can be hard to get on the island, except in the resorts. So, who is Koyao right for? First, Koyao is good for both luxury tourists and backpackers too. You can rent bungalows for as little as $26 a night. You can also indulge in luxury suites that cost anywhere from hundreds of dollars to the thousands. Number two, Koyao is good for both short time and long time stays. You can stay for one to two nights or you can stay for months. You can use Koyao as a jumping point 
to visit many places and do many things in the southern Phuket region. Number three, Koyao is good for people who just want to chill and relax. Period. And the last point is that what many people do is combine a trip to Koyao with other travels they're doing in the region. And this makes total sense. As I sat down for breakfast and got ready to leave, I wanted to give a special shout out to all the workers at Panantara who make it such a great place to stay. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you found the information useful, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.